Hey brothers, hey sisters, this is Adam with the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube channel. As always, I pray you're doing well, strong in faith and eyes and hearts, waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And in the interim, I want to feed you all with some of his words. I am so excited today to bring you some more information about the book of Second Baruch. And as some of you know, Baruch was the scribe of Jeremiah and was there during the well destruction of Jerusalem and there's so much here there's so much contained so much information uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions um, about certain things that are really revealed here in second Baruch and I only ask you to keep an open mind and to let the spirit guide you and not the traditions of men the traditions of men have taught you to not look at books like this and as I've said many times before, you know, we're, we're okay with watching movies written by men. We're okay with reading books written by men. Um, but uh, we're, when we're confronted with books like these, books that were removed by the authorities uh, hundreds of years ago, then we're uh, instantly willing to uh, side with them and, uh, and say, no, we shouldn't read these books. But again, I only ask you to, to test all things with the Spirit and go to these matters in prayer and let your Heavenly Father uh, let you know what is truth and what is not truth. Don't believe anything I say. Don't believe anything you know, any other man or woman says, but only what our only teacher, which is the Holy, Holy Spirit, uh, do the talking. And so again, I just ask you to keep an open mind. And when you do, there's so much here. There's so much information that, is, uh, that has just been waiting for us. Uh, I call these books, honestly, the hidden manna. Um, you know, it's it's. You look at the uh, the Ark of the Covenant, in which I can't wait to, to share this with you. Um, the where the Ark of the Covenant went is actually described here in the second book of Baruch. But in the in the Ark of the Covenant, I believe are the three testaments. Uh, you had the the two stone tablets uh, of the of the law, which being the first testament. You had the Second Testament, which was the, the almond staff, the budding of the staff. Uh, and then uh, the Third Testament, which was the hidden manna. Those are the three items that were located in the ark. And I do believe that the hidden manna was reserved until these last, last days, which does fulfill the word of Yahweh, in which uh, these things would be sealed up until the time of the end, as he spoke through the prophet Daniel. So, brothers and sisters, I can't wait to share this with you. And... Uh, I'm just gonna we're just gonna dig right into it and here we go and again we are reading the book of second Baruch chapter 1 and it came to pass in the 25th year of Yekanyahu Jeconiah king of Yehuda that the word of Yahuwah came to Baruch the son of Nerahu Neriah and said to him have you seen all that this people are doing to me that the evils which these two tribes which remained have done are greater than those of the ten tribes which were carried away captive for the former tribes were forced by their kings to commit sin but these two of themselves have been forcing and compelling their kings to commit sin for this reason behold i bring evil upon this city and upon its inhabitants and it shall be removed from before me for a time and i will scatter this people among the other nations that they may do good to other nations and my people shall be chastened and the time shall come when they shall seek for the prosperity of their times for i have said these things to you that you may bid Yeremiah, jeremiah and all those that are like you to retire from this city. For your works are to this city as a firm pillar, and your prayers as a strong wall. And now we're going to skip over to chapter 4. And Yahweh said unto me, This city shall be delivered up for a time, and the people shall be chastened during a time, and the world will not be given over to oblivion. Do you think that this city is that city which I said, on the palms of my hands have I graven you? This building now built in your midst is not that which is revealed with me, that which was prepared beforehand here from that time when I took counsel to make paradise and showed it to Adam before he sinned. But when he transgressed the commandment, it was removed from him, as also paradise. And after these things I showed it to my servant Abraham, Abraham by night among the portions of the victims. 
And again also I showed it unto Moshe, Moses, on Mount Sinai, when I showed him the likeness of the tabernacle and all its vessels. And now, behold, it is preserved with me as also paradise. Go, therefore, and do as I commanded you. So just to recap what we've read so far, uh, obviously the first first of, uh, chapter was just kind of just giving you a setting of what year it was. This is, again, uh, during the time of Jeremiah and during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Destroying, or this is right before Nebuchadnezzar destroys the uh, the city of Jerusalem, and uh, and the people of Judah go into captivity, and then in chapter four, what we just read is a pretty, well, not a not a clear glimpse of New Jerusalem, but a mentioning of New Jerusalem in that the current day Jerusalem, or even the Jerusalem of ancient times, is not that New Jerusalem which we read about in the book of Revelation. And I think this is a really, really strong connection um, you know, instantly to let you know that uh, the book of Baruch is inspired. And there's really a lot more here, and I can't wait to get into more of it. But uh, just wanted to give you kind of some basics as of where we are right now. All right, and I'm going to skip uh, chapter 5 and go on to chapter 6. In chapter 5, just very quickly... Uh, Baruch gathers uh, Yeremiahu, Jeremiah, and a few others and goes over some of the things that uh, Yahuwah had told him. And uh, now we're on to chapter 6, and a lot of people have had quite, many have had questions over the years where, what happened to the Ark of the Covenant. And because books like this were removed, there weren't clear cut answers, so people had to speculate. Uh, some people said that it was destroyed with you know Nebuchadnezzar sacking the city. Some people say he took it. Some people say that it was just lost forever. Well, right here answers all those questions as to what exactly happened to uh, the Ark of the Covenant. So listen in. This is Second uh, Baruch chapter six. And it came to pass on the morrow that lo, the army of the Kadesim surrounded the city, and at the time of the evening, I Baruch left the people, and I went forth and stood by the oak. And I was grieving over Sion, and lamenting over the captivity which have come upon the people. And lo, suddenly a strong ruach raised me, and bore me aloft over the wall of Jerusalem. And I beheld, and lo, four angels standing at the four corners of the city, each of them holding a torch of fire in his hands. And another angel began to, to send, descend from heaven, and said unto them, Hold your lamps, and do not light them until I tell you. For I am first sent to speak the word to the earth, and to place in it what Yahuwah Sebaoth has commanded me. And I saw him descend into the Holy of Holies, and take from thence the veil, and the holy ark, and the mercy seat, and the two tablets, and the holy raiment of the priests, and the altar of incense, and the forty-eight precious stones wherewith the priest was adorned, and all the holy vessels of the tabernacle. And he spoke to the earth with a loud voice, Earth! Earth, earth, hear the word of El Elohim and receive what I commit to you and guard them until the last times so that when you are ordered, you may restore them so that strangers may not get possession of them. For the time comes when Yerushalayim also will be delivered for a time until it is said that it is, it is again restored forever and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them up. Chapter 7. And I heard these things, I heard the angels saying unto those angels who held the lamps, Destroy therefore and overthrow its wall to its foundations, lest the enemy should boast and say, We have overthrown the wall of Sion, and we have burnt the place of El Elohim, and ye have seized the place where I had been standing before. Chapter 8. Now the angels did as he had commanded them, and when they had broken up the corners of the walls, a voice was heard in the interior of the temple after the wall had fallen, saying, Enter, ye enemies, and come, ye adversaries, for he who kept the house has forsaken it. And I, Baruch, departed. And it came to pass after these things that the army of Kasdim entered and seized the house and all that was around it. And they led the people away captive and slew some of them and bound Sidgyahu the king and sent him unto the king of Babel. And I, Baruch, came, and Yeremiahu, Jeremy, whose heart was found pure from sins, who had not been captured in the seizure of the city, and we rent our garments, we wept, well, excuse me, we wept and mourned and fasted seven days. And it came to this is chapter ten. And it came to pass after seven days that the word of Elohim came to me and said unto me, Tell Yermiahu and go 
and support the captivity of the people unto Babel, but do remain here amid the, de amid the desolation of Sion, and I will show you of after these days what will befall at the end of days. And I said to Yahu as Yahuwah commanded me, and he said, Indeed, departed with the people, but I, Baruch, returned and sat before the gates of the temple, and I lamented with the following lamentation over Sion, and said, Blessed is he who was not born, or he who, having been born, has died. But as for us who live, woe unto us, because we have seen the afflictions of Sion, and what has befallen Yerushalayim. I will call the sirens from the sea, and ye, Lilin, come ye from the desert, and ye, Shadim, dragons from the forests, and awake, and gird up the loins unto morning, and take up with me the dirges, and make lamentation with me. And the lamentation of Baruch continues for quite a few chapters. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to skip to uh, chapter 13. And it came to pass after these things that I, Baruch, was standing upon Mount Sion, and lo, a voice came from the height and said unto me, Stand upon your feet, Baruch, and hear the word of El Elohim. Because you have been astonished at what has befallen Sion, you shall therefore be assuredly preserved to the consummation of times that you may be for a testimony. I'm going to read that again for you. You shall therefore be assuredly preserved to the consummation of that time of the times that ye may be for a testimony. Is this that testimony? I can't wait to share the rest of this with you, brothers and sisters. So that if ever those prosperous cities say, Why has El Elohim brought upon us this retribution? Say unto them, You and those like you shall have seen this evil. This is the evil and retribution which is coming upon you and upon your people in its destined time that the nations may be thoroughly smitten, and then shall they be in anguish. And if they say at that time, For how long? You will say to them, Ye who have drunk the strained wine, drink ye also of its dregs, the judgment of the lofty one who has no respect of persons. On this account he had aforetime no mercy on his own sons, but afflicted them, as his enemies because they sinned then therefore were they chastened that they may be sanctified but now ye peoples and nations ye are guilty because ye have always trodden down the earth and used the creation unrighteously for i have always benefited you and you have always been ungrateful for the beneficence all right, I'm skipping just a few chapters here, skipping to chapter 21. Um, there was some dialogue between Baruch and uh, the Most High, and uh, just, you know, kind of lamenting more, kind of like, hey, I don't understand, you know. Um, but anyways, uh, just prior to where I'm going to start again, um, God has instructed Baruch to fast for seven days, and uh, he was going to speak to him some more. So uh, here we are. This is chapter 21. And I went thence and sat in the valley of Kidron, in a cave of the earth, and I sanctified my soul there, and I ate no bread, yet I was not hungry, and I drank no water, yet I thirsted not, and I was there till the seventh day as he commanded me. And afterwards I came to that place where he had spoken with me, and it came to pass at sunset that my soul took much thought, and I began to speak in the presence of El Elohim, and said, O you that have made the earth, hear me, that have fixed the firmament by your word, and have made firm the height of heaven by the Ruach. That have called from the beginning of the world that which did not yet exist, and they obey you. You that have commanded the air by your nod, and have seen those things which are to be as those things which you are doing. You that rule with great thought the host that stands before you, also the countless holy beings which you did make from the beginning of flame and fire, which stand round about you, your throne, your, you rule with indignation. To you only does this belong that you should do forth with whatsoever you wish. Who caused the raindrops of rain to, to rain by number upon the earth, and alone know the consummation of the times before they come, have respect unto my prayer. For you alone are able to sustain all who are and those who have passed away, and those who are to be, those who sin, and those who are righteous, as living and being past finding out. For you alone do live immortal and past finding out, and know the number of mankind. And if in time may have sinned, yet others, not a few, have been righteous. You know where you preserve the end and those who have sinned, or the consummation of those who have been righteous. For if there were, if there were this life only which belongs to all men, nothing could be more bitter than this. 
For what profit is strength that turns to sickness, or fullness of food that turns to famine, or beauty that turns to ugliness? For the nature of man is always changeable. For what were formerly now, we no longer, and what we now are, we shall not afterwards remain. For, for if a consummation had not been prepared for all, in vain would have their begin, been their beginning. But regarding everything that comes from you, do inform me. And regarding everything about which I ask you, do enlighten me. How long will that which is corruptible remain? And how long will the time of mortals be prospered? Until what time will those who transgress in the world be polluted with much wickedness? <clears throat> Command therefore in mercy and accomplish all that you said you would bring that your might may be made known to those who think that your long suffering is weakness and show to those who know not that everything that has befallen us and our city until now has been according to the long suffering of your power because on account of your name you have called us a beloved people bring to an end therefore hence mortality and reprove accordingly the angel of death and let your glory appear, and let the might of your beauty be known, and let Sheol be sealed, so that from henceforth it may not receive the dead. And let the treasuries of souls restore those which are enclosed in them. For there have been many years like those that are desolate from the days of Avraham, Avraham and Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and of all, that's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all those who are like them, who sleep in the earth, on, on whose account you did say that you had created the world, and now quickly show your glory, and do not defer what has been promised by you. And when I had completed the words of this prayer, prayer I was greatly weakened. Okay, chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that, lo, the heavens were opened, and I saw, and power was given unto me, and a voice was heard from on high, and it said to me, Baruch, Baruch. Why are you so troubled? He who travels by a road but does not complete it, or who departs by sea but does not arrive at a port, can he be comforted? Or he who promises to give a present to another but does not fulfill it, is it not robbery? Or he who sows the earth but does not reap its fruit in its season, does he not lose everything? Or he who plants a plant, unless it grows till the time suitable to it, does he who planted it expect to receive fruit from it? Or a woman who has conceived, if she bring forth untimely, does she not assuredly slay her infant? Or he who builds a house, if he does not roof it and complete it, can it be called a house? Tell me that first. And I answered and said, Not so, O Yahuwah, my Adonai. And he, who an and he answered and said unto me, Why therefore are you troubled about that which you know not? And why are you ill at ease about these things which you are ignorant? For as you have not forgotten the people who now are, and those who have passed away, so I remember those who are appointed to come. Amen. Because when Adam sinned and death was decreed against those who should be born, then the multitude of those who should be born was numbered. And for that number a place was prepared where the living might dwell and the dead might be guarded. But therefore the number aforesaid is fulfilled. The creature will not live again, for my Ruach is the creator of life, and Sheol will receive the dead. And again it is given to you to hear what things are to come after these times, for truly my redemption has drawn nigh, and it is not a far distance as aforetime. So the back and forth dialogue, it strikes me immediately, it reminds me just like kind of like the back and forth between uh, Job, Eob, and, uh, and God, Yahuwah. And um, it's kind of like, it's always, hey, you can't understand the depth of my wisdom. And who can? Who can, who can understand the depth of the wisdom uh, of our Creator who spoke all this into existence? It's just so amazing to constantly just stay in his word and try to understand and um i think he slowly peels back back the layers but you know still how how immense this is this is honestly I, in my opinion is the greatest treasure hunt uh, of our life and uh few even know that it that this hunt exists the hunt to understand more of his wisdom and in his ways and understanding and 
to me, it's it's really been the joy of my life the last few years, and I'm just uh, excited to be a part of it. So, uh, chapter 24, For behold, the days come, and the sepharim shall be opened, in which are written the sins of all those who have sinned, and again also the treasuries in which the righteousness of all those who have been righteous in creation is gathered. I'm going to pause there. That reminds me instantly of uh, Daniel, in which he talks about uh, the books being opened, uh, and uh, all will be judged, or those... Um, anyways, uh, for it shall come to pass at that time that you shall see... And the many that are with you, the long suffering of El Elyon, which has been throughout all the generations, who has been long suffering towards all those who are born, alike those who sin and those who are righteous. And I answered and said, But behold, O Yahweh, no one knows the number of those things which have passed, nor yet those things which are to come. For I know indeed that which has befallen us, but what will happen to our enemies I know not. And when ye will visit your works, Chapter 25, And he answered and said unto me, You too shall be preserved till that time, till that sign which El Elyon will work for the inhabitants of the earth in the end days. This therefore shall be the sign, when a stupor shall seize the inhabitants of the earth, and they shall fall into many tribulations, and again when they shall fall into great torments. And it will come to pass when they say in their thoughts, by reason of their much tribulation, El Elohim no longer remembers the earth. Yea, it will come to pass when they abandon hope that the time will then awake. Do you know anybody that's abandoned hope, brother and sister? Not those that are trusting in the Most High. So, interesting stuff so far. And I'm going to read a few more chapters, quickly discuss them. Um... And then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the video today and call this part one. I don't know how many parts there will be, but I like keeping videos less than 45 minutes, um, and because uh, there's so much here, and I really there's there's oh, there's so much. I can't wait to get to the rest of this. I wanted to go through the beginning first because this kind of sets the stage for the rest of it. But in any case, uh, without further ado, uh, chapter 26. And I answered and said, Will that tribulation which is to be continue a long time? And will that necessity embrace many years? And he answered and said unto me, Into twelve parts is that time divided, and each one of them is reserved for that which is appointed for it. In the first part there shall be beginning of commotions. Beginning of birth pains, anyone? And in the second part there shall be slayings of the great ones. Who the great ones are, I don't know. Um, but, uh, in any case. And in the third part the fall of many by death, and in the fourth part the sending of the sword, and in the fifth part famine and the withholding of rain, and in the sixth part earthquakes and terrors wanting, and in the eighth part a multitude of specters and attacks of the Shadim, that's the, uh, the demons, and in the ninth part the fall of fire, and in the tenth part rape and much oppression, and in the eleventh part wickedness and unchastity, and in the twelfth part confusion from the mingling together of all those things aforesaid. For these parts of that time are reserved, and shall be mingled one with another, and minister to one another. For some shall leave out some of their own, and receive it in its stead from others, and some complete their own, and that of others, so that those may not understand who are upon the earth in those days, that this is the consummation of times. Let me ask you, brothers and sisters, those that are not watching, waiting, understand that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, HaMashiach is king and salvation. Those that are in darkness, do they understand that this is the consummation of times, the end of days? Maybe some because of what's in Hollywood and all the, all the um, end times movies. But in general, do people really know that these are the end times? A lot of you, a lot of you, brothers and sisters that are walking in the light and walking in the spirit, understand that by confirmation, by confirmation of the signs, we do not seek a sign, but He certainly gave us the signs, and we've been watching. He said many times, "Watch, therefore, watch, watch, watch," so that He does not come come upon us as a thief. Watch, Revelation three three. Watch. In chapter twenty eight, this reminds me so much of Daniel chapter twelve which I'll put a slide of as I'm reading this. 
Nevertheless, whosoever understands shall then be wise, for the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts, a week of seven weeks. Let me read that again. For the measure and reckoning of that time are two parts, a week of seven weeks. Obviously, this was clarified through the prophet Daniel of the 70 weeks. 70 weeks are determined for that people. And I answered and said, It is good for a man to come and behold, but it is better that he should not come, lest he fall. But I will say this also, Will he who is incorruptible despise those things which are corruptible? And whatsoever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible, so that he might look only to those things which are not corruptible? But if, O Yahuwah, those things shall assuredly come to pass which you have foretold to me, so do you show this also unto me, if indeed I have found grace in your sight? Is it in one place, or in one part of the earth that these things are to come to pass, or will the whole earth experience them? And I'm going to read one more paragraph, and then we're going to end this as part one. And this is chapter 29, and I believe it's a parable. It could have one meaning or dual meanings. It's certainly up for debate, and I want your guys' feedback and opinion. And it shall come to pass at that selfsame time that the treasury of manna shall again descend from on high, and they will eat of it in those years, because they, these are they who have come to the consummation of time. So we can either take it literally that uh, manna will descend from on high um, and we will be eating of it kind of like the Israelites did in the the uh, 40 years in the wilderness or this is a parabolic meaning in that we will be eating of the hidden manna as in the hidden books kind of like I said earlier in this that in the ark was found the three testaments the stone tablets the, the Old Testament the second testament in the budding staff that's the New Testament and then the, um, the, the bowl of the hidden manna, the bowl of the manna, which uh, could be interpreted as the Third Testament in the hidden books, the books that were deliberately hidden and fulfilled the will of the Most High, and that words would be sealed up until the time of the end. And uh, now we are here in the end, and these books have been revealed, or are slowly being revealed, and some are eating of it, some are not. Uh, I will be the first to tell you that it does not change your salvation in that salvation is only found in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach and in pitching your tent uh, as some say with uh, the Most High, with Yahuwah and having that personal relationship with Him and forgiveness of sins through the blood and the atonement of uh, our the, the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world and so I leave that with you. You know, are these books are these books the hidden manna, or are we going to be literally eating uh, the manna again? Maybe it's both. Uh, maybe it's neither. I'm not really sure. But again, I'm uh, I'm no teacher. Uh, I'm just your brother, in which uh, I feel being I'm being called to uh, to speak these books to you, to share them with you, so that you can test these things for yourself and see what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Uh, please uh, spend some time in prayer and uh, testing all things like a Berean does. Brother and sister, I can't wait for part two. Things really get really interesting here, and there's so much uh, that gives us more clarity on the end times that things just harmonize with the book of Revelation uh, and other prophetic books like Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, that tell the end. And like I said, they just harm these books like this harmonize and do not contradict. So... Can't wait to share them with you. I hope uh, you were. I uh, pray that you were blessed by this part one, and uh, brothers and sisters, just stay in faith and uh, strong in faith and eyes to Jesus Christ Yeshua, who uh, might even might even come back before part two comes out. So um, I, I just want to stay busy in growing in the Spirit and growing in the Word and His Word, and um, talk to you guys soon. Maranatha.